In this Exadata Cloud at Customer quick demo, we're going to look at how to enable DataGuard. So the first thing we do, as always, is get into our cloud GUI and drill down into the cluster. For this, we're going to use two clusters. Cluster one is our primary database. We'll pick that database, DBSG, and drill down into that database. And this will be our primary database. We'll be using cluster two for our standby database. You can see here with database DBSG in cluster one, there is no data guard association. It has not been enabled. To enable data guard, we simply click on the enable data guard button. We choose maximum performance or maximum availability. Maximum availability is synchronous. Maximum performance is asynchronous. We choose the peer region for the standby database. We then need to select the Exadata infrastructure we'll be using. So for this, we'll pick the compartment and we can see here the Exadata infrastructure we'll be using. And then within that Exadata, Exadata infrastructure, we need to pick the actual cluster where we will be building our standby database. So we pick the Exadata infrastructure, the target cluster. Now we type in the password. And once we type in the password, there is no more to do. We can simply click on the Enable Data Guard button, and the job will be created to create the standby database and enable the Data Guard association between the primary and the standby. So now you see that this database is now enabled with Data Guard. It's updating. It says the role is the primary. If we click on the association or the we can see the work request, excuse me, the work request is a great data card is in progress. We click on that. We can see that there are currently two associated resources, a data guard association and a primary database. Remember, we're currently looking at the primary database. If we go back to the database details screen and go up one level to the cluster, we can see that in cluster one, the DBSG database is being updated. Going now, we'll look at cluster number two, which we picked to be our target cluster for the data guard standby database. We drill down into the compartment where cluster two is, drill down into cluster two, and we can see here that the DBSG database is provisioning. This is our standby database. It has a different unique name than the primary database. If we drill into the DBSG database and look at the details, you see that data guard is not yet enabled and there are no data guard associations. This database is in lifecycle provisioning and you can see that it is creating the database at this point. At this point, we'll go back to the database home and you can see that within this cluster in the database home that we are provisioning, the database is currently still provisioning, but it's been created at this point and started at this point. We now go back into the cluster one and let's look at the primary database. The primary database is updating at this point. If we click on this database and go into the details, we can see that it is enabled with data guard. It is the primary role. And now we'll look at the data guard associations and we see that here's the peer database. It's on cluster two, it's a standby, it's in maximum performance. We can look at the work request and see that the create data guard job is still in process. If we click in and look at the job and look at the associated resources though, we now see that there are three associated resources. There's a standby database, a data guard association, and the primary database. If you look at the log messages, we can see that we are creating the standby database at this point. Going back to the database details, you can see that once again, we are looking at the primary database. We flip over to the secondary standby database, and you can see here the data guard is not yet enabled. However, if we look at the work request, we can see that the create database has completed at this point. So we do have a database that is up and running on the second cluster in a completed state. 
we go back and look at our database at this point, and now we see that DataGuard has been enabled in the standby for this database. And we can see the DataGuard association, the peer database is DBSG, and that's our primary database. If we click on that, we can go immediately to the primary database and look at the details click on data guard association and we see the standby database. So we now have created the relationship between the two databases and we're enabling the log transport and the data guard broker behind the scenes at this point. Once again, we're now looking at the standby database. It's up and available at this point. We can click once again between the primary database and the standby database. And we see that this environment is now available. The data guard association is completed. We can we can click down to the work request and we can see at this point the create data guard has completed successfully. We go into the log and you can see here that there are three associated resources, the standby, the data guard association and the primary database. They've been created and updated. And at this point, we have a primary database with log transport applying to the standby database, and we have available, high, highly available environment established. This concludes this Exadata Cloud at Customer quick demo.